Welcome to the part two of uh, impact textures. Um, last texture we did in the part one, uh, I think it was very stylized. And this time maybe I'm going to add a lot more details to the textures. And uh, we're going to have some randomization as well. So we're going to start with the basic shape, uh, cut into it. Create uh, this using a very interesting node, which is Plata Circular, I think. We're going to extract some shapes from the bottom here, add some um, blur to it, especially directional blur. So basically we can add a little bit movement um, to the texture. And then we're just going to create four variations very quickly with just moving sliders. And so we can have this ready for the engine. And as usual, I just took a texture, went to the engine and uh, created this. So I think it's got enough randomization in the shape. So if I will just separate um, this texture, you can see here, I'm telling Niagara to pick one of those four textures by random and just spawn it. Okay, so let's dive into Substance Design and create those uh, textures. And here we are in Substance. So basically, the more tutorials I do, the more nodes I discover that I can use. Um, so I'm hoping this is one is not going to be too difficult in terms of concepts and, um, you know, the shapes that we're going to do. But hopefully it's going to expand your knowledge a little bit about the nodes and uh, maybe it will inspire you as well to start using um, nodes that you never uh, used before, um, as I do, basically because uh, you might come up with some interesting um, stuff right so let's start with the uh, shape so i'm gonna start with poly oh actually let's maybe start with polygon instead mm, and i want to create a triangle so the new node i found was this one multi crop grayscale and what it does, it kind of scales down the, the triangle. Um, so let me just scale it down in the previous node. Yep, something like this. I'm going to offset it as well to the center using the uh, transformation. And now what I want to do, I want to cut out some interesting circular shapes into this uh, triangle so i've done many tests and i think the cells are the best for this kind of job i'm going to use histogram scan um, something like this uh, maybe position at point one And I want to scale it, so I'm going to stretch it by uh, 300. And now I'm going to use blend node with subtraction. Obviously, we need to scale down ourselves. And now if I play with this uh, disorder slider, I'm getting so different shapes basically. Okay, I'm gonna stay with this and now I'm gonna use this uh, splatter node, circular splatter node. There you go. I don't know why, but it keeps connecting to background um, as a default. So I'm just gonna change it to pattern one instead. Change the pattern to use image input. And I got this. Um, so I'm gonna go down to where rotation is I'm gonna put 90 and now the scale is a bit off as well so I'm gonna scale it up on both axes and use radius node to get maybe something like this and now is the time to actually play with the randomization so I'm just gonna put a ra ra radius random um, I'm gonna leave um, 
angle and maybe spiral for now as well though maybe spiral factor something like in here maybe size random and I'm gonna increase the, the scale of it so as you can see a lot of randomization I'm adding Okay, so it does look a little bit ridiculous, but stay with me. Uh, I usually leave spread one for now and then I'm gonna adjust it. Um, let's get random. I'm just trying to bring it a little bit to what we had before. Okay, let's leave it like this and maybe come back later um, to fix some stuff. Okay, so now I what I want to do I just want to extract this uh, this sort of shapes because I don't need the whole circle. And so I'm going to blend it with some sort of gradient. Um, so let's create this gradient. I'm going to use shape. Uh, this one I'm going to rotate it minus 90. And a really cool node is shape mapper. Not shape splatter, shape mapper, shape mapper, this one. I'm gonna reduce the radius to zero, maximum the width. I'm gonna change the pattern amount to one. And now if I go back to our gradient, I can basically do this. I'm going to use histogram scan as well because I need this uh, mask to be sharp. And I'm going to blur it just a bit. I also want to disable tiling because like you can see it's popping on this side as well. I'm going to revert the order and I'm just going to say multiply. Uh, maybe less. And blur, something like this. So as you can see, we don't get enough shapes. So I'm just going to go back to the splatter circular now. Maybe increase the amount of those shapes. Okay. Another thing is, I'm not sure if I like the shape of um, our triangle, so I'm just going to go back to the cells and maybe change the disorder just a bit. I think this might work. And now I'm just gonna change maybe the pattern amount so I can get more. What I'm looking now is just I'm looking for some interesting shape. Okay, let's leave it like this for now. Go to the transform and maybe offset it to the center. And maybe let's try to stretch it 150. 
and maybe 120 again. Okay, I think this might be a little bit too much, so I'm just gonna shrink it. So I'm gonna say 90. Okay. And now what I want to do, I want to start cutting out the shapes um, on the back. So we're gonna blend it with subtraction again. Um, but this time we're gonna do um, a different gradient. So we're gonna still use cells, but we're gonna blend cells with the gradient on the uh, on the other axis to create a mask. Minus 90 or maybe 180, okay. And we're gonna multiply it. So we need a histogram scan so we can have better control of our gradient. So basically it's it could be a lot more sharper. And now we're gonna use another histogram scan so we can have even more control over the dots. And now we're gonna just plug it in. I'm gonna change the scale of the cells. Change the disorder a little bit. So what I don't like in this mask is that this straight line, basically because it's a uh, it's just a very straight line, so I'm gonna warp it. And I'm gonna use pedal and noise. And I'm gonna disable a little tiling in this node as well. Okay, I'm just trying to break the, uh, the shape of this straight line, so something like this maybe. And this will be our mask. So what we could do here as well, well let's try maybe get transform and stretch it. So we could get a bit more interesting shapes. And now we can um, control our alpha gradient in here. Now we can go back to cells and just play with this order, see what we could get. Maybe increase the scale a little bit. Get the histogram adjustments maybe. Okay, so we're cutting into those um, edges here as well, which is kind of what we want. And maybe something like this will work for now, because obviously we'll be going back and tweaking all those uh, values to get um, a lot more uh, randomization within our textures. Okay. So maybe let's try to break the shape even further using warp. I'm gonna use cells as I need a very sharp adjustment shapes. Something like this maybe, but less scale. Okay, I'm gonna use multi warp, multi directional warp grayscale. I'm gonna use parallel noise. Um, I probably need transformation as well because I, I wanna stretch it. So, as you can see, this is not great, so I'm gonna change the mode to chain. And I'm gonna go back to our transform, I'm gonna scale it by 300%. And maybe reduce the scale of the parallel noise. So 
So what I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to warp the shape a little bit further. Okay, the next thing will be probably blur. So I'm just gonna add blur and I'm gonna add another one, which will be direction or blur. So I can add this movement into the texture. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to create this motion blur. Um, and now I'm gonna blend those two together. blended using maybe max lighten that might work see the thing is we get the blur shapes on the back as well and i don't think this is what we want so i'm going to use transform and i'm going to move it a little bit forward like this to indicate basically that movement is happening uh, in this direction Now I'm gonna center the texture a little bit better and add another blur. Just slightly. And now ideally, let's just rotate it. Actually looks like a hand <laughs> of some sort of monster. What I like to do as well is to add gradient map and add some color to it just to see how it might look with some color. Okay, so that's our texture. Now we could go back. So we got this selected, double click basically on this one and go back to the beginning. And this is why I think it's powerful with Substance Design. And now we can just play with the sliders. And you can get a lot of different options. Maybe you just want like sparks basically. So scale it down, one of those sliders. Um, you can also go back to cells maybe and change the disorder so you're gonna get different shapes of, of the triangles. As you can see, you can get a lot of really cool looking textures. Okay, so maybe let's try to pick something like this and now go back to the splatter and uh, circular. We can increase pattern amount if we want more, if we want less. Just move the slider basically. And now we could change the radius as well just to get a bit more randomization. Okay, I'm going to stick maybe with something like this for now. And change the size of it as well. Now, for example, you can go back to your a mask shape and play with this slider if you want something like this maybe or you know something that's got a lot more spread you can you know just select all those nodes that you designed to be uh, random and to add randomization to your shape and just you know change those values I 
Okay. So yeah. So you can have, you know, you can take this one, save it to Photoshop and then play with other values. Like for example, this one, save it to Photoshop. And that way you can create, you know, four or more of those textures. Then you can basically take it into game engine and say to the particle system, Hey, just pick um, those textures by random by creating this sort of a uh, flip book texture. So yeah, impacts part two. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.